Hey guys, so for this week's family night activity, it's family art night, and we are making these really pretty ocean scenes because we are talking about ocean animals this week, or oceans in general, I think, because I picked the craft before I picked the books, but it's, they're pretty, they're really pretty. Now, ours were done in crayon, and I'm going to do another one with you now in crayon, but you can use um, paint or markers or color pencils or whatever you have, but this is what we're going to make. It comes to you in your Create bag, which I will zoom out so you can see. Create bag, you can pick it up at the front desk or through curbside, whichever one works for you. This is our last Family Night activity until January, so make sure you come and get it now while you can. Um, So, everything you need is inside of your thing. You get a piece of white paper to start, and you can go horizontally, like Miss Annie did on her sample, or I think I'm going to go vertically, which does not fit in the camera quite as nicely, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'm going to go vertically with it. You also get instructions, which kind of tell you what I'm going to tell you, and then some black construction paper ocean animals and some black construction paper so if you don't like any of our animals or if you want more than one of them you can use this black paper to create your own it's entirely up to you so we've got instructions which I'll set right here off to the side so you might like I said you might need watercolor paints crayons markers whatever it is that you want to use I'm going to use crayons because they're easiest for me um, and you're going to start so that it looks, um, you're going to start here in the middle of your paper. I mean, you can do this however you want. You just want your paper to look like the ocean. Um, and the sample that I found that I made me want to do this craft, I, they had to have done it in paint. And they did different shades of blue, and they started in the middle with the lightest shade of blue and worked out till it got darker. That's a little harder with crayons. But I am going to do a little bit of that. So we're going to do some nice, like just kind of oceany circles working our way out till we all get really, really. This is like that scene in The Little Mermaid where Ursula creates that typhoon right before Eric jabs her with the ship. There we go. Okay, so that's one shade of blue. And then I'm going to take another shade of blue and we're going to go kind of the same. I'm just going to work outward on each one of these. Maybe creating some extra swirlies in the corners. And I went ahead and pulled a green one too, because depending on where you are in the ocean, it looks a little green. You know. Sometimes it's green, sometimes it's teal, sometimes it's bright blue, sometimes it's super clear, and you can see all the way to the bottom, which can be kind of freaky if you don't know how deep it is. <laughs> so, we're just going to add in some nice little green bits. And then I think I'm going to do some more blue. This is not quite blue enough. I don't think my paper is very white still. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'm going to turn the paper see if I get any different kinds of swirlies. Now, the nice thing about this and the different directions of crayon is that you're always going to see what direction you went in, which usually would bug me because there were so many different directions because Miss Jamie can't stick to a plan. Um, but I think it gets, if you're a little, if you're just a little messy, it's almost more ocean like with the waves. Now, at home, you are probably not going to be allowed to color off of the paper and onto the table. Your grown up probably will not like that. But because I am the grown up here and I clean up my own messes most of the time, <laughs> um, I can do that. 
you probably should not. So there, just a little bit more so that it looks mostly there. And like I say, you can color it until there's no white left at all. You can be like super detailed like Miss Annie. Like if we look at Miss Annie's, she really filled her paper. But, because everybody crafts differently, and because Miss Jamie is gonna tired of making circles on her paper, and because you are probably tired of watching me, we're going to leave it like this. Which I still think is really pretty oceany. And then, all we have to do is we have to glue our ocean critters in. Now, like I said, if you don't like our ocean critters and want to make your own, or if you want a second of any of these critters, you have your own black piece of paper to, you can cut out what you want. There. I think I like it like that. I think that's what I'm going to do with them. And you can do them however you want. There's no wrong way to do this. Remember that. Um, And then just glue your pieces on. You accept that he's now upside down, so we're gonna have to make him go this even more. We're gonna switch. Put him over here. <laughs> now, remember when crafting, there's no wrong way to do this. You can do this however you like. Make sure you check out the ocean stories for this week. I did pick some really nice books. I picked a couple of my absolute favorites, and one that is gonna have some really nice facts in it. Um and then after this week, we're going to take a couple of weeks off for the holidays, and when we come back, we're going to read about, I think we're going to do some more ocean animals. I think that's what our January um, family story time theme is, and that's what we'll be starting with. Um, I'm going to, Miss Jamie's going to be making those videos ahead of time, because due to my holiday travel, I have to quarantine when I come back. Um, so, Miss Jamie is working ahead. So I will be doing them now in December, but you will be seeing them in January. That is the beauty of recording things. <laughs> Watch them forever. Or at least until we delete them from YouTube. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think just the shark is left. You know, sharks are my sister's absolute favorite. You know, we're going to tell this story because I don't know how many people actually watch this, and I know she doesn't, so it's okay. I can tell this story. So when we were kids, I was probably, oh, second-ish grade, the first time we went down to the Baltimore Aquarium, which technically is not the Baltimore Aquarium, it's the National Aquarium, but it's really cool. I went back this spring as a grown-up, and it is still really awesome. They have got the coolest um, shark exhibit, which I didn't really like when I was a kid because sharks freaked me out a lot, but it is really cool because you kind of go, you walk in concentric circles through, like, layers of the ocean, and you see different sharks at each level because of the way that sharks like to swim and where they like to live. It is really cool. So I do recommend, once travel is easier if you get a chance to check out the National Aquarium. It's in Baltimore. It's right there on the harbor. It's really pretty. Um, anyway, so we went to the Baltimore Aquarium, and my sister loved sharks. I didn't. Sharks were freaky. <laughs> um, anyway, so we go to the Baltimore Aquarium, and she's real little, and we... <laughs> Because I was in, I had to have been about second-ish grade, which means Michelle would have been not even in kindergarten yet. Um, so we go to the Baltimore Aquarium, and some of their areas and tanks, because of where the critters live, are like they're backlit with black lights, so it's kind of like glow in the darky, and it's really dark. Well, mom wasn't. She'll tell you this so I can repeat it. She wasn't very smart that day because she put Michelle in a dark outfit. Well, they have an octopus in one of their blacklit tanks. And he's this, he's not very big. Like, he's a little octopus, right? And Mom waves me over and says, Jimmy, you have to check this out. This is really cool. And, I, you know, they're 
designed for kids. So they have those like little step stool things you can stand on all over the place. So I step up on this thing because I was short then. I'm still short now. And <laughs> there's this octopus right here in the corner of this tank, right? Okay, so Michelle comes over and she puts her hand like right where the octopus was. I don't think she realized where it was. And then it moves. She screams. Like she screams. And then she takes off running. They finally caught up to her. She was down at the bottom with the sharks. And that's where she stayed all day. Dad sat on a bench and watched Michelle follow Sharky around the aquarium. Like in circles. <laughs> it was pretty fun. It's a, it's fun. It's one of my favorite Michelle stories that I think she hates me telling. But it was so funny because Sharky was going to protect her from you know, the world's smallest octopus. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, I hope you enjoy your holidays and have fun, enjoy some family time, do some fun things, um, and I will see you in January for some more fun. We're just going to keep trekking along with our virtual stuff, which I know is absolutely nobody's favorite, but we're really hopeful that by spring, definitely summer, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, we'll be able to do some outdoor programming, so it'll be a little less screen time, but... We'll see how it goes. Like I said, keep your fingers crossed. Enjoy your holidays. Stay safe. And I will see you later. Bye.